Good morning, everyone. I'm here to do a little talk and give a little summary of an article from the Michigan History Magazine that was came out and published on January and February issue of 2020. It is about Fago. So many of you have had Fago. You've drank it. Um, it's some of my personal favorites are the grape and rock and rye flavors. So I'm not sure what your favorites are. If it's the red pop, the orange, the root beer, they're all awesome. So it is a Michigan brand that was started by immigrants that came from Russia. Their names are Ben and Perry Faganson. They started it back in 1907. Uh, the name Fago evolved from the last name Faganson because Faganson was too large to fit onto the bottles. So the brothers actually started their business like many other businesses started in a home within the Jewish area of Detroit. It was known as Hastings. Ben and Perry believed in hiring local people uh, for their business, and they ended up with a variety of nationalities working there. And one of they ended up with a lot of African-American employees. And at one point, a union was trying to organize in the Fago company, but they refused to let them come in and organize because the union wanted to eliminate all of the African-American employees, and they were not going to do that. They wanted to still keep their local employees working with them. Eventually, a union did come in. I'm guessing it was around the 50s to the 60s because it was Jimmy Hoffa that brought the union in. And for those of you that have heard the Hoffa name, he is known as a union leader that he disappeared on July 30th, 1975. It's believed he was murdered by the mafia. There's lots of stories out there as to what might have happened to him and where his body is located. The FBI, they still get information and still keep looking for him. As recently as about 2013, they were looking in Oakland County for him. It was all over the news and digging up ground, trying to find him. So Ben and Perry, they had sons. Um, their, you know, the cousins took over the business. It was Mort, Herman, and Phil in the late 1940s after they had returned from serving time in World War II. They continued to have a variety of nationalities in their company. And because of this, it's believed that having all those nationalities work there and having the majority of them being African American might have protected their building during the 1967 race riots that happened. During the race riots that were going on, and there was many going on all over the country around this time, Detroit was a big one, the National Guard had been called in to help subdue the riot. But about 1,400 buildings had been burned and looted and destroyed during this time. But the Fago building, nothing had happened to it. They did close down for a little bit while things rejuvenated, and then they their workers came right back to work. Uh, to this day, Fago continues to be a major supporter within the Detroit community, They've given away lots of merchandise, holiday turkeys. They even started an all-star academic contest. And I like this quote that the author put in um, from Mort Ferguson. I'm sorry, Mort Faganson. Mort said, the old man used to say, you've got to be a good neighbor. So we work at it. And it seems like they're continuing to do this with all their giveaways and merchandise, uh, the holiday turkeys and the scholarship. So one thing that they have shown is to be very local, loyal to your community. And I have some pictures here from the article. And right here is a picture of a line worker with some cases of Fago. Here it is in some glass bottles, which they do still, you can find glass bottles today of Fago. And right here is the Faganson brothers, their first truck um, back in 1912. We have, was this Perry Faganson with his foot on the front tire. So this right here is Perry. 
And again, here's a worker who's mixing some of the vats and putting some of the recipes to work. And here we have, this is again, Perry. And I know it says that his son's Mort is on his right, but it's his right, not our right. So this is Mort, this is Herman, and this is his nephew, Phil. And I thought there was a page here that had a couple extra pictures. And here again is, this is Mort and Phil here. And again, here is the author who wrote the article, John Grimm. He's a journalist and professor at Michigan University, Michigan State University. So he wrote a book about Vago, so this would have come from his book. He's also written 20 other books, and it looks like there is one about Coney. So that might be an interesting book for those of you that might want to try and find it and read it. But just a little history about the Fago company that you might not have known starting in Detroit here. So have a good day, everyone. I hope you enjoyed hearing just a little bit about Fago and the company um, and the fact that you can get Michigan history. You can subscribe to it. I can get you that information if you would like it. There are lots of business reply things within here if anyone would like to ever get one. You can find it online, and I believe the library would also carry a copy of it if you wanted to go and read their um, copy when everything opens back up. So have a good weekend.